Welcome to our review on alpha, beta and gamma. First thing we need to know then is that when we're talking about atoms, the vast majority of them are stable and a stable atom will not undergo decay. However, there are a smaller number of atoms that are described as being unstable. So this means that they've got an unstable nucleus that will undergo this process of decay and will emit radiation as it does so. So any material that emits radiation is known as radioactive. In the table, what I've done is summarized down the key facts about the four types of radiation that we need to know about. So we've got alpha, beta, gamma, and neutron radiation. Three of them are particles, and only gamma is an electromagnetic wave. So alpha, beta, and neutron are all particles. The gamma is an electromagnetic wave. The third column there, I've given you their symbols, so make sure you're aware of what their symbols look like. In terms of what they actually are and the symbol we use, they're in the last two columns. So when we're talking about alpha particles, they are the nucleus of a helium atom, and so their symbol is on the right-hand side there. Beta particles are fast-moving electrons, and the symbol is on the far right column. Gamma, because it's an electromagnetic wave, is just one of the waves of our electromagnetic spectrum. So it doesn't have an equation symbol. And neutrons, they're particles in the nucleus, as we've said, and the symbol is in the bottom right corner of the table there. Do remember that when we're looking at the symbols, the top number is the mass relative to a proton, and the bottom number is the charge. Hence why the electron has a minus one as a bottom number, because electrons have a minus one charge on them. So when we're considering decay, we've already said that the unstable nuclei undergo this process of decay. Now, the reason that we have electrons being given off as one of these types of radiation is that the neutrons that make up the nucleus are not stable. So the neutron itself can decay to make a proton and an electron hence where the beta particle comes from. If we want to actually record the amount of radiation being given off by any particular material, we use something called a Geiger-Muller tube or a Geiger counter. And what that does is it records the amount of radiation and gives us audible clicks. So you may well have seen this in the lab at school where your teacher had different samples and held it in front of this little tube thing and then you could hear these little clicks. Now the clicks that you can hear are tiny currents produced when the radiation ionizes atoms of the gas inside the tube. What we've got here is a diagram that summarizes one of the most important properties to remember about our alpha, beta and gamma radiation, which is their ability to penetrate materials. So our alpha particle, first of all, is the least penetrating of our three types of radiation and is actually stopped by just a few sheets of paper. Beta particles are able to pass through the paper, but they will be stopped by a few millimetres of aluminium. But when we come to the gamma rays, they will go through the paper, through the aluminium, and only be stopped by a few centimetres of lead or a few metres of concrete. But even then, it's not necessarily going to stop all of it. So the gamma rays are the most penetrating, alpha particles the least penetrating. This is important to remember because one of their favourite questions was to give you a table of results using a Geiger-Muller tube and then ask you to identify what radiations are present within the samples. And obviously what you're doing there is having a look to see where the counts drop off to identify whether it's alpha, beta or gamma. The second part we need to consider about our different types of radiation is their ability to ionize materials. So we've already seen that alpha, beta and gamma have different penetrating powers, but they also have different abilities to ionize materials. And what we mean by ionizing is that when we're talking about the alpha, the beta, the gamma, then what they can do is remove electrons from atoms that they come into contact with and this then results in positively charged ions. So I've given you this little table to summarize the key features about alpha, beta and gamma radiation. So if we look at alpha, first of all, its relative mass is large, it's got a charge of plus two, 
it's got a high ionizing power and its range is very short so it's not very penetrating. Beta has a small relative mass, charge is minus one because it's a fast moving electron. It's got a medium ionizing power and a medium range. Remember it's stopped by a few millimeters of aluminium. Then our gamma rays have no mass because it's just electromagnetic radiation, no charge. It's got a low ionizing power, but it's the most penetrating. So remember when we're talking about these being ionizing radiations, it means that they can ionize other atoms. And in order to do that, they have to transfer energy to it. So what we can say based on this table is that the alpha particles transfer more energy to the material they travel through, and therefore they've got a high ionizing power, but only a short range because they've used that energy to ionize the materials they've come into contact with. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can recall the names of the four types of radiation, alpha, beta, gamma, and neutron. You can describe the types of radiation that unstable nuclei emit. You can describe the different penetrating powers of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, and use that information to identify it when given a table of results from a Geiger counter.